head across to Davos, where Menika Doshi is interviewing the finance minister. much for speaking to us here in Davos. Let me start by asking you, sir, about the challenges that you think India will face given the global slowdown, the market volatility that we've witnessed since the beginning of this year. As, uh, <coughs> Michael as you said in the introduction, uh, if you look at India's growth uh, compared to the rest of the world and what's happening elsewhere, unquestionably we stand out. Yes. And that's why everybody uses these uh, phrases like bright spot, sweet spot, and mm. so on. Uh, but if you uh, look at our own uh, uh, economy in isolation, unquestionably we can do better. Mm. And uh, even in a global slowdown environment, we have the capacity to do better. Mm. Uh, uh, I would uh, split up our challenges into two. Okay. There are challenges uh, 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 which are beyond our control. Hmm. And there is very little that the management of domestic economy can do. And of course there are issues that we can rectify ourselves. Hmm. And both these collectively as also individually can certainly add to the 7, 7.5% growth rate. Right. And that's what gives you the cutting edge. For instance, uh, two important challenges uh, uh, that we face. Uh, I think one is the global slowdown itself. Hmm. Now, what is the impact of global slowdown on us? Uh, obviously, the first impact is the shrinkage of exports. Yes. And shrinkage of exports uh, leads to shrinkage of the GDP. Uh, uh, in our case, the shrinkage is substantially in value terms uh, uh, because the prices are low. It's not so much in volume terms, but volume terms also is low because uh, the buyer's capacity to buy has been Reduced. contracted. The second important uh, 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 challenge which emerges out of the first one is that world is so interconnected uh, and it's full of crises and challenges. So currently if you look at it, uh, there is the worry of the Chinese slowdown, yes. there is uh, the US fourth quarter mm. uh, which may not be as good as the rest of the year and US slowdown um, is far more adverse to global economy than even the Chinese slowdown. And uh, you have this changed equation. Who would have imagined months ago or years ago anybody saying the world needs higher oil prices? Uh, but that's the change equation that's taken place in the world. And therefore it's slowed down. Now this has two impacts. It has impact on sentiment which adversely impacts the markets. Hmm. It's also impacts on currency. Now till about August last year we were, except the Swiss franc, which is an exception, uh, the only currency in the world which was keeping pace with the dollar. Mm. And after the Chinese devaluation in August, we've also been marginally affected. The impact on our 6-7% is much less than impact on other emerging economies. Right. It's much less than what's happened in China, what's happened to Russia, Brazil. It's also very different from the impact on other currencies, Japan, Europe and so on but we have been impacted. Mm. So these are two of the important uh, factors. The second factor, which is again not uh, substantially beyond our control, two bad years of monsoon. Yes. Uh, I think between Arvind Subramaniam's uh, initial assessment at the time of the economic survey that we could touch 8% and where we've lagged behind, uh, uh, the monsoon has made the critical difference. Okay. It not only reduces the contribution of agriculture to GDP, but it also adversely impacts on the purchasing power of the, the farming community. And therefore, today, if you look at the Indian economy, uh, it's growing on the strength of increased public investment, increased foreign direct investment, increased urban demand. Mm. But that's not accompanied by increased rural demand. Therefore, we need to rectify these systems. Now, besides this, if I look at the other challenges, uh, 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 one of the uh, uh, consequential impacts uh, of uh, lower oil prices and lower commodity prices is uh, uh, low levels of inflation, particularly the WPI being in the minus for the last 14 months, uh, uh, reduces the gap between the GDP and the normal G nominal GDP. 
and that impacts on quantum of revenues. Mm. So at a 7, 7.5% 7 GDP, you well could have a nominal GDP of 11, 12%. Mm. Uh, uh, but if you're going to have 8.5%, 9%, it's lower. Uh, so you lose out in terms of revenue. So the money is available to you for poverty alleviation scheme, the money is available to you for uh, uh, adding to growth so itself is impacted. So I think uh, uh, nominal GDP is a challenge. Uh, then, of course, uh, uh, amongst the, the continued structural reforms, I think the last 20 months have seen, uh, uh, somebody counted it here in Davos for me, uh, I don't keep a count of them, and said there are 34 major decisions that you have taken, each one of which adds to the structural uh, reforms. I think what's extremely important is, uh, in 20 months we haven't committed a mistake. We haven't reversed the direction. We've maintained the direction. And it's extremely important for us uh, to carry on the reforms. Now, of course, two, three of those measures are legislative. Mm. The GST is legislative. Uh, uh, the uh, bankruptcy code is legislative. But a very large number of them will be covered by the budget. They'll be covered by money bills. They'll be covered by executive decisions. And I am absolutely clear that we intend to go on that path. Once we continue that path, I think uh, what ha uh, it adds to the credibility of uh, Indian economy okay. and once you are able in a global crisis like situation the credibility of one economy which stands out then you attract global attention and once you attract global attention investment follows because interest is there as far as your so economy it's a virtuous is cycle of sorts. it's a virtuous cycle which sits in and I think the uh, last of the major domestic challenges so reforms is something which is under our control right. uh, uh, the second important challenge which is under our control is to rectify the health of the banks. Mm. My regret is that before the present government come in, came in, uh, the kind of indiscriminate lending in some cases which has taken place, some sectors absolutely uh, became fragile, uh, uh, no steps taken to deal with those sectors, no steps taken to recover those monies. Uh, 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 no steps taken to recapitalize the banks. Uh, I think these are all steps which are now being put into place. And therefore, the Indian banking system has to lend for growth. Right. Uh, so where will you get the money to recapitalize the banks? Because you are faced today with the choice of sticking to fiscal discipline. And, and you've done, uh, you know, your government has done a great job of contracting uh, th that side of the balance sheet and making sure that you all are on the path of fiscal prudence and then you've got like you pointed but out that's only half the truth the full truth is the last government achieved fiscal deficit targets by cutting huge expenditure yes this year i will not only achieve the fiscal deficit target but i'll achieve it without those significant cuts which uh, my predecessors used to make. But would you attribute much of that to the fact that crude oil prices came down, giving you some cushion? Obviously. Yes. Obvi no, no, but at the same time, I lost 10% of the revenue because the Finance Commission said uh, it must go to the states. States, fair enough. Uh, and this year, I am going to lose 1 lakh 2,000 crores uh, uh, worth of fiscal space because that's the impact of the, uh, the pay commission on the central revenues, the OROP impact being separate. Yes. So I just, and that is, in fact, I think is the question that most global investors are asking. How will you balance these two issues? The fact that you need to put maybe more public investment to work to kickstart or help maintain growth in the economy. And on the other hand, tax collections have not been maybe what you expected. They've been 66% no. of targets so far no, uh, think, from the I last data. Mid-year, mid you should not assess. This investment also, sir, is way no, behind I, your I, targets. I, 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 let, me, let me set the record straight. As far as tax collections are concerned, on indirect taxation, I am way ahead of the target. On direct tax collection, I'm slightly behind, but I'm narrowing down on the target. Mm. So overall on tax collections this year, I am reasonably comfortable. So the impact of global slowdown or of the corporate balance sheets is not being significantly reflected in my uh, 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 tax collections. I am not even cutting expenditure. The disinvestment uh, target uh, has not been achieved. And I must uh, honestly t tell you that one of the reasons why in some of the sectors I slowed down on disinvestment consciously because when the markets are choppy, the markets are low, the commodity and the metal stocks are low, that's not the right time to sell. You, I, I, I certainly won't sell when the prices are low. Let the prices recover. I will sell those. And let, let us be very clear. 
at the end of the day, what does disinvestment today mean? It is a resource belonging to the government or the people of India. Today, it is lying by way of shares in a public sector company. Hmm. Instead of holding that resource in terms of shares in a public sector company, why not have a modernized railway station? Or any other or Why not have a highway is? connected uh, uh, to major areas? Why not have a freight corridor on that money? Therefore, it is readjustment of a resource belonging to the people of India. And the critics of disinvestment uh, or the conventional critics of disinvestment, if they still exist, uh, must realize that a, as a part of any responsible economic planning, a government must readjust where its resources are. Do I need shares in a public sector company where in any case I am holding majority shares? So whether I hold 80% or I hold 70%, that's the question. Yeah. Or I use that 10% to create a national highway. Yeah, But sir, if I may ask you, you said that you know disinvestment targets have not been met because you thought that the valuations were not correct. There were though windows of opportunity, but that aside, there are holdings that the government has, for instance, in Suti, which is the ITC holding the Axis Bank, which you've paired a little bit in the last year. Can I now year. end the debate on uh, disinvestment. Well, why won't? Why is the reluctance to I, sell I, the I, I, ITC or LND stakes, sir? Uh, the the financial year is not ended. There is still uh, some time for the financial year. Wait for some time, and you will uh, hear of the government's decision next. Sir, the view from Bombay. Yo, just one second. This is a live interview, if you don't mind, sir. Uh, this, uh, sir, are you giving us a sense that? You might, in fact, finally the government, whether this one or the previous, give up the reluctance to part with the no, stakes that they have. No, I have not said so at all. There are, there are some decisions uh, uh, which are in the offing. And therefore, uh, the present figures that you have of disinvestment may not be the last figures that you have as of 31st. Fair month. enough. But what is the reluctance on the ITC and LNG there is, there, is, uh, the, there is no reluctance. Uh, there is government resource lying in several companies. It's a question of prioritization. But they're not even, okay, I won't press the point, but you know the argument on that front. You have made a mention in the recent past that you would like to recapitalize banks further. Um, again, I ask the question, sir, how will you find the money example, to do that given the, the many will, demands that you no, have? The money will come from two sources. A, it will come from the budget. And therefore, I've announced a program already. Yes, which is, earlier this which, year. which is publicized, yes. I may add to that investment. Yes. So yes. that's not the final investment. I may increase upon that. Additionally, as the strength of the bank picks up, that is, they are able to make recoveries of some of their NPAs, etc., and their balance sheets start improving, the banks have also have been told to comply with Basel III norms, as also uh, uh, issue some additional shares and raise a significant amount through the issuance of share capital, bringing the government holding down. I have said the bottom line for government holding is 52%. Mm. And therefore, that being the bottom line, the banks are entitled to raise money from there, which will also be a part of the recapitalization, in addition to what will come from the budget. But you are uh, confident that you will be able to provide additional money to so. what you've already you see, laid out in I, the I plan? Think, uh, uh, this year's growth may be somewhat better than last year. And next year's growth, uh, the current estimates are maybe still better. And when growth increases, tax buoyancy increases. And as tax buoyancy increases, there is an additional resource which is available to the government. Now, how that additional resource is to be spent is a priority, and banks are certainly a priority, because good health of banks is necessary for funding growth. Okay. Uh, you all have increased the special dividend that public sector units must give the government from, I think, in an earlier 20% to now 30%. And, you know, there were some questions being raised saying, is this money just moving from one pocket of the government to another pocket of the government? No, again, and it's I want the to same. know, is it's this because you're, again, you need funds again, uh, to be able to no, carry out the programs no, that you're doing? Obviously, should we have uh, uh, money belonging to the people of India or the government of India lying as reserves in public sector? Hmm. Or should those reserves be additionally converted into a facility for the people of India? You see, I, I look at it, when monies go into government revenues, uh, there is a grudging feeling, why is the government collecting the money? The government doesn't collect for ministers, the government doesn't collect for itself. The government collects to spend on the people of India. And therefore, these are all monies, whether they come from, let, let me take an example, the oil prices. Now, the advantage we got out of the low oil prices 
has clearly been split up into three. One part of it went to the oil marketing companies because their health uh, was becoming per precarious. They lost out money in the future purchases. The second, we sent a, gave a significant benefit every time to the consumer. Hmm. An equal benefit also was reserved by the government. Now, what did the government do by that with that money? That's where the 30% extra public expenditure has come. Yes. So people who drive cars, who pay for petrol and diesel, and are paying duties on that, must then also pay for funding the highways. They must also pay for funding the rural roads. Now, this is money which is going for high. How has the highway program been revived? The first 17 tenders after the new government took over didn't attract a single response. Yeah. How is it that the highway sector has got going once again? It's on the strength of this money. Therefore, it is the resource being provided, used, belonging to the people of India, being used to provide a facility for the people of India. Yeah. No, so I don't think anybody is arguing against that. I think just, just the, the only question I'd like to put to you on this issue was that, in a sense, it gives out the impression that instead of allowing public sector businesses to run their own decisions on how much dividend they want to pay out, how much they want to keep in reserve to be able to expand further capital expenses, etc., the government is telling them what the to do. The previous government and my predecessor had told uh, a large number of public sector units uh, that either you use this money or you lose this money. I know, I know, I'm aware. Uh, this you, is you're you're aware of this. And therefore, yeah. that was a, and I think what my predecessor did was a correct decision. It was the right decision. After okay. all, instead of sitting in the money, today when you need additional public expenditure, why should you have lakhs of crores collectively lying with public sector only in reserves? That money must be spent at a time when the economy world over is facing a stress situation. This money has to be spent on expansion. And if it's not spent on expansion, after all, the shareholders can take a part of the money out. The government is a shareholder. And the shareholder says, I use this money for an additional resource. Can we expect, sir, in this budget, given that you have said that you want to provide some relief to the stressed aspects of the rural uh, economy, that there will be no rationalization of food and fertilizer subsidies? Because one question is that you might need to rationalize those subsidies see, to be able to come you, upon you more have, money you to... Have, I, I'll tell you. Rationalization of subsidies is a great unsung success story of this government. For instance, uh, forget uh, oil and uh, diesel. The LPG, what we've done. People in the past have only spoken about it. We've actually implemented it. We've made huge savings. Now, there are other areas hmm. where pilot projects are being experimented. Hmm. Now, depending on the success of those pilot projects, people who get the benefit of a resource from a state, that's a subsidy, is a resource. Hmm. Am I not entitled to ensure, for the benefit of the people, that nobody receives it twice over? No, fair enough, of course. Am I not entitled to ensure that it's not diverted? Yes. After all, I said in Parliament, that subsidies are an unquantified amount going to an unidentified section. Subsidies must become quantified mm. and must be targeted to the people who need the subsidies. So the poor in India have nothing to fear. They'll be compensated for the subsidies. Right. But those who don't deserve subsidies or those who misuse those subsidies by claiming it twice over, fake connections, duplicate connections. Now look at the number of duplicate connections we found in the LPG hmm. by using the Aadhaar and the Jam platform. Uh, 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 I think it, if, it's, if it works, uh, let the pilot project results come out. Okay. So uh, as far as tax policy goes, you have uh, articulated that you would like to reduce the corporate tax rate over the next two to three years, along with that, clean up the tax policy and reduce incentives as well to industry. Can we expect to see a roadmap in this budget of Why how you, you achieve to... Now, obviously, budget decisions I can't announce in advance. So you are asking me, how will you balance, how will you balance, how will you balance fiscal deficit with the, uh, uh, the needs of other people? Now, these are all the decisions. We'll have to wait for the budget to come out. Okay. Uh, one final question that's on the rupee and uh, interest rates. Are you hopeful that interest rates will move further down through the course of this year? You see, I think the RBI in the last one year did well. After all, they brought it down by 125 point, basis points. Now... The RBI has been repeatedly, the governor has been repeatedly voicing his policy that he wants inflation to be under control. 
And with the current state of prices, I think broadly the inflation is under control. It's the RBI which is as a responsible institution will take a decision. Everyone in India would like uh, the rates to be low because obviously lower rates help the economy. The RBI is also aware of it, but they, do, they have to do a balancing act between yeah. inflation, growth and um, uh, interest rates. Okay, and, and the rupee, are you comfortable with this level simply because it might give that much of an egg boost to our exports, which is a sector that's been suffering you all see, this time? Uh, I'll tell you, uh, uh, I, I, I don't see any fear of a free fall as has taken place in other economies. We have huge amounts of reserves. Uh, the, our economy is doing well. We are probably best positioned in terms of macroeconomic data compared to any other comparable economy in the world. And therefore, I think uh, 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 we are stable by all counts. Uh, now, the fall which has taken place in the last few weeks uh, uh, is, a, is completely attributable to global factors. Yeah, sure. It's, uh, and uh, internationally, the currencies have fallen far more than India. In fact, we are amongst the least uh, declining currency. And as this, this choppiness of the markets, uh, this repositioning of investments from one economy to the other takes place and people take a balanced view, I am I'm reasonably certain that uh, the rupee will recover some of its health for the simple reason uh, uh, where if people are withdrawing from economies across the world, hmm. where are they investing? I think risk taking is something which investors are becoming uh, a little averse to. And therefore they are holding back their investments. Because uh, normally the logic was with the rates going up in the US, uh, they'll withdraw from everywhere and go to the US. Hmm. But if the US fourth quarter results are not exactly exciting, uh, then uh, probably I think the uh, in days to come, the investors will have to sit back uh, and take a more reasoned decision. Okay. So you're at the halfway mark of your government, uh, this term of your government. How would you rate the work that your ministry has done? This is my final question. You see, I am nobody to rate it. Frankly, I am not in the rating uh, no, business no, myself. No, no. Rate I, is and are you pleased with the own work? You see, you I'll tell you, I, I am extremely clear uh, uh, and the government is extremely clear that uh, economy is one area we have to deliver. Now, from the day we've taken over, we've been facing, uh, we've been a part of global challenges. Uh, the world economy has been most challenging. And therefore, we have our own shares of sleepless nights. Hmm. Uh, uh, to, 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 to steer the economy through this challenging situation is something which we are doing. And I'm glad we are not making mistakes. We are, we are, we are, we are moving consistently in the right direction. Uh, 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 you, you are at the moment in, a, uh, in an interesting place uh, where almost everybody uh, uh, is appreciative of the way India has handled its, its affairs. And I'm sure uh, 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 domestic audiences uh, will also uh, uh, come to a same judgment call. You want to give me a number on 10? No, I should not. I'm nobody, right. not nobody to rate Okay. People. Thank you very much sir, for your time. Uh, and thank you and enjoy the rest of your trip here in Davos.